On this video we're taking a look at our NBA parlay picks for the games that are happening on Saturday, April 23, 2022. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Five plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Our first parlay pick is. Brooklyn Nets vs Boston Celtics. Brooklyn minus 3. And here is why. The Boston Celtics will be gunning for a commanding 3-0 series lead after taking care of business in a thrilling 114-107 win in Game 2 on Wednesday. Jalen Brown led the team with 22 points and 6 assists, Jason Tatum added 19 points with 10 assists, Grant Williams provided the spark off the bench with 17 points on 4 of 4 shooting, while Dandolf Ice chipped in with 15 points on 7 of 9 shooting. As a team, the Celtics shot 52% from the field and 11 of 31 from the three-point line, as they allowed the Nets off to a flyer and trailed for most of the game, but they hung in the contest and used a 16-2 run in the fourth quarter to ambush the Nets and escape with the unlikely win in the end. Tatum was well below his best as he shot just 5 of 16 from the field, but the Celtics were able to get quality contributions from players like Thijs, Williams and Horford to keep them in the contest when they were down big. If Durant and Irving get it going with a bit more confidence, it could be lights out at the snap of a finger for the Celtics. But Jason Tatum is clearly blossoming into a superstar before our very eyes. He didn't even shoot the ball well in the previous outing, but he was penetrating the lane and dishing out passes on instinct like he was Neo blindfolded. Who remembers that moment in the movie, The Matrix when Neo realizes he's the one? Well, that's where Tatum seems to be at right now. With the center Robert Williams still listed as out for the Celtics, the game plan on Saturday is simple. Throw bodies at Kevin Durant, play 1990s-style defense and continue to distribute the ball well on offense. If anything, the Celtics should be encouraged by the fact that they were still able to beat the Nets in a game where Tatum clearly wasn't at his best as a scorer. That probably won't be the case in Game 3 against Brooklyn's up-and-down defense. The Brooklyn Nets are starting to feel the pressure as they've yet to make their mark in this series, and they will be hoping for a better performance after laying an egg in Game 2. Kevin Durant led the team in scoring with 27 points, Bruce Brown added 23 points, Goran Dragic added 18 points off the bench, while Seth Curry chipped in with 16 points. As a team, the Nets shot 46% from the field and 10 of 21 from the three-point line as they opened the game on a 9-0 run and looked to be in full control after leading by as many as 17 points, but they went ice cold in the second half and you have to point the finger at Durant, who finished shooting just 4 of 17 from the field in what was one of his worst shooting nights ever. Kiri Irving didn't look like himself either as he finished with just 10 points and 1 assists on 4 of 13 shooting. The criticism surrounding his performance in Game 2 have cut deep, and he'll use this moment to rise above it all. It isn't the fact that the Nets are just losing, but he's getting soundly outplayed by Jason Tatum on the floor as well. This will be Durant's you-all-must-have-forgot moment on the court. It isn't like he didn't have good looks to hit shots on Wednesday. The shocking part about his performance is the fact that he was missing shots he'd normally hit with his eyes closed. He'll take all of the criticism to heart and come back with a vengeance on Saturday. This is a must-win for the Nets, and they lacked accordingly on their home floor in front of what should be a loud crowd. The Celtics swarming Durant becomes less of an issue, as long as the other players are hitting their shots. That was the case in the second game of the series, and I'm expecting it to continue to be so with the Brooklyn crowd on fire. Meanwhile, Kiri Irving will be highlighted for more than just hand gestures in this game. Given the way the series has gone, along with the outside noise, I'm banking on Brooklyn's two stars turning on the fireworks and running away with this one. Our second parlay pick is. Minnesota Timberwolves vs Memphis Grizzlies. Memphis minus 3. And here is why. The Memphis Grizzlies will be gunning for their third straight win in this series, after outlasting the Timberwolves in a 104-95 comeback win in Game 3 on Thursday. Desmond Bain drained 7 three-pointers to lead the team with 26 points, Brandon Clark added 20 points on 6 of 9 shooting off the bench, while John ja Morant tallied a triple-double of 16 points with 10 rebounds and 10 assists. As a team, the Grizzlies shot 42% from the field and 14 of 37 from the three-point line as they got off to a nightmare of a start and found themselves trailing by 26 points in the second quarter, but they kept their composure and hung in the contest until they rallied with a 37-12 fourth quarter to win comfortably in the end. 
Memphis dug themselves two different holes to climb out of in this contest before securing the game in the fourth quarter. The game started with the Timberwolves scoring the first 12 points and the Minnesota crowd in a frenzy. The lead stayed in double figures before Memphis was able to cut the lead to seven at halftime and appeared to have found their groove. Instead Minnesota came out and dominated the third quarter and led by 25 points. Incredibly, the Grizzlies went on a 21-0 run from the final minute of the third quarter until the 8.33 mark of the fourth quarter. Memphis's depth showed through as reserves Tyus Jones and Brandon Clark played a crucial role in the run. Jones finished with 11 points and Clark poured in 20. Memphis would go on to outscore Minnesota 37-12 in the fourth quarter to pull away for the win on a night when their best player, John Morant, was not at his best. Morant shot just 5 of 18 from the field but did have 10 rebounds and 10 assists in the huge win. The Minnesota Timberwolves may still be dealing with the hangover of losing such a big game on Thursday. D'Angelo Russell led the team with 22 points and 8 assists, Anthony Edwards added 19 points, while Patrick Beverly chipped in with 14 points and 5 assists. As a team, the Timberwolves shot just 38% from the field and 12 of 35 from the three-point line as they set the tone with 39 points in the first quarter to take an early 26-point lead which they held until the fourth quarter, where they managed just 12 points to allow the Grizzlies to slip away in the end. The coaching strategy was questionable for the Timberwolves as they refused to call timeouts, and Carl Anthony Towns had another quiet game as he finished with just 8 points in 33 minutes of action. While Memphis basks in the afterglow of an amazing comeback win, the Timberwolves sit licking their wounds and hope for a better outcome in Game 4. After being a decent fourth quarter away from taking a 2-1 lead in the series, the Timberwolves fell apart and were outscored 37-12 in the final frame. Memphis's strategy throughout the game was to frustrate Minnesota's all-star center Carl Anthony Towns. Memphis sent two or three defenders at the big man at all times, and the results were readily apparent. Towns took just four shots the entire game, hitting three and only took two foul shots, making both. Minnesota will not win many games with its star player scoring eight points and grabbing five rebounds. Towns had more turnovers and fouls in the game than he had shots. The four shots taken were the fewest in his NBA career. Towns seemed almost nonplussed by his performance and his teams when he was asked what they might do next. Game 3 felt like a white flag waving game to me, and the Timberwolves are waving it feverishly. From the way they struggled in the fourth quarter to their post-game comments, Minnesota looks like a team that is already getting their golf bags ready. It is inexcusable to get four shots out of your best and most dangerous weapon. The fact that Towns also took just two free throws in the game is a clear reflection of Minnesota and Towns' concession to the Grizzlies' defensive strategy. Unless Towns shows the kind of aggression that he has not displayed as of yet, this will not end well for Minnesota. Memphis has dominated the glass, the bench play and tempo. All this and Morant has not had a transcendent game as of yet. I think we will get that game very soon from the Memphis superstar, and that will spell doom for Minnesota. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. You should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.